welcome to Racing News. In the show this week, the culmination of champion season is upon us with the Elan Gold Cup race meeting just a week away. With eight graded races on the card, including four grade ones, there's top class racing to be enjoyed. But first, we follow up with the runners to find out how they've come through the Vodacom Durban July. It's been two weeks since the running of the Vodacom Durban July. It was a day of wonderful fashion, fantastic crowds and healthy betting turnovers, despite punters being spoiled for choice, with an array of international sport betting options available on the day. But back to the horses, 18 of our country's best gave it their all over 2,200 metres. So how have they come through their runs and where to from here for them? We caught up with their connections to find out more. Justin, I'm sure you must still be smiling after such a fantastic effort by Do It Again. How has he come through that run? Oh, look, he's... Uh He's right here, but he's he, he's come through so beautifully. I mean, he's a it does help when they're when they three years old. Uh, there's just a lot less wear and tear on them as, as from racing. So uh, he's come through exceptionally well. But uh, we just feel uh, it, it's better for him uh, to to pack up, and uh, he'll go into quarantine uh, at Letter Scroll and 16 days there, and then back into Cape Town. So uh, unfortunately. With African horse sickness around at the moment, these horses uh, sadly have to go sit somewhere for 16 days before I can take them home. So uh, he'll go there and then he'll be aimed at the Queen's Plate and the, and the Sun Met. Made to Conquer came so close to making it a dream for Jeff Lloyd. How has that horse come through the run? Wow, that was, he's just an incredible horse. You know, he was just so lucky that uh, he started his racing late and uh, he's just getting stronger and stronger with every run. So, uh, you know, we're quite confident that he's, he's one of the best stayers around and uh, we'll aim him at the, uh, at the, uh, the Gold Cup uh, at the end of the month and uh, he is, you know, he'll be one of the horses to beat in the race for sure. It was wonderful to see the way Elusive Silver ran. Now he's going to come out again on Elan Gold Cup Day, is he? No, we've decided no. Uh, he's had uh, obviously previous injuries and we just feel that uh, the, the Champions Cup could be just one run too many. So he'll probably do exactly the same thing. He'll be packed up and if we just look after him every season, I mean he earned I think he earns almost seven, eight hundred thousand rand in this in these four months here. So, what more can a horse do? Owners are fantastic people, and uh, horse comes first. Uh, we'll save him and and then have a, a great summer with him. Now, tell me something. What do you think has accounted for your success this winter season? Because you've had a remarkable season here. Yes. Look, I I, I have the stock. So. It was a very good season, but I have high, high standards and there are a lot of races that I lost that I, that I wish I hadn't, like the Gold Challenge with Snow Dance. I think that was a, that was a, a heads up, heads down that could have gone our way. And uh, so I'll take that as a, a disappointment in the season. But bar that, I think we, we accomplished a lot that we set out to do. I think this season was very much the, the July. Everyone from the, when I arrived here said, oh, you know, it's your race to lose, which is always easy. Fourth placed finisher Majestic Mumbo has run his last race in South Africa. He's currently resting up before joining Yakin and Quarantine en route to Dubai. Both will come out in next year's carnival for Mike de Kock. Obviously African Night Sky, when he was set alight at the 1200, that was him gone. He's got a short run in. We all know that he's got to be covered up, and uh, that was one of the unfortunate things. In the when I saw him go round the field and 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 take it up 1200 out, that was certainly not part of the plan, and 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 it was a big disappointment. But uh, you know, he'll go into quarantine, and then probably uh, will be aimed at Singapore. Uh, that's what it looks like will be the plan with him. Rocket Countdown is. Um come well after his run he's, he's doing very well stew has been very happy with him he's fresh as anything um haven't done much but uh he he will be out uh, on the 28th in the champions cup uh, he's got a good draw so we're going to have a crack at it and um he's, he's a nice little horse you know he's, he's still very immature young horse and um he's just going to get better and better as he gets older 
Duncan, how has Fiorella come through her Vodacom Durban July run and where to from here for her? Look, uh, she took her race pretty well. She was a bit tired after the race. She'd obviously had three very hard runs leading up to the race. I didn't think she gave a bad account of herself in the July. She was the first three-year-old filly past the post. And uh, we haven't done much with her since the race. We've backed off her. We've got a plan of taking her to Cape Town for the Majorca and the Paddock Stakes. I think she'll be quite competitive there. Also possibly thought the 2-2 was just out of her reach, the distance. And uh, I think we've still got quite a lot, a lot left in the tank with her as a four-year-old. Tilbury Fort finished eighth. He was eight lengths back. How's he come through that, Sean? And when can punters and followers expect to see him out again? Yeah, he's come through it very well. Obviously, um, he, uh, the, the pace of the race, he got caught way back and he over a little bit, but he did finish off well. He's a horse that we would just target, obviously, the Johannesburg spring season with um, the Charity Mile and, and the Summer Cup. Robbie, tell me, how has Coral Fever come through his Vodacom Durban July run? And where to um, from here with the horse? He took the run excellent. Uh, you know, it wasn't, uh, there wasn't much pace on in the race no. and this and that. And he only basically got going the last 200 metres. And uh, so he came off the run very well and uh, returned to Joburg uh, well in himself. And he's going to now have a break for a couple of months. Uh, before the new summer season comes up for us. Okay, so will he be out again in um, Gauteng before the end of the year? Uh, yes. And then Liege, your Summer Cup winner. Can we expect to see Liege take up his place again in the Summer Cup this year? Yeah, I'm sure we can. He, he has come through it well. He's having a, a, a few vaccines at the moment. And, um, yeah, I, I think... Uh, he'll, be, he'll be there to defend his, his crown. He's come through it fine, and yeah, uh, once again, uh, victim to to that pace in the race. Yeah. And uh, I'm sure we'll see improvement in the summer cup. Paul, how has Dark Moon Rising come through his Vodacom Durban July run, and where to from here for the horse? He's come through it very well. You know, the pace never suited him. He was. Uh, Always uh, in a difficult place with the pace changing and uh, you could see the horses uh, that were up there went on and he was never going to get a blow in. But he's come out of the race in very good order. Uh, he's, he, I'm very, very happy with him. He waits good, he looks good. We've given a few days off and he's back into work because the mission is uh, the Gold Cup, which I, I, I have, well, I shouldn't say, I, I, but I have no real doubt that he won't get the trip. I can just allude back to what Marcus and Delpes said that's, I don't, they don't think I'll train a better stayer. Matador Man put up a lovely piece of work here at the Vodacom Durban July Gallops. Were you perhaps hoping for a little bit more in the race come July day? Not really, Michelle. At the end of the day, uh, you'd hope for a pace. A horse like that has to be able to settle. Um, we were stretching him in distance. He's only found his form with the blinkers on. So all these factors uh, contribute to him over racing. Uh, caught out wide and, and, and no, no, no type of a run at all. So um, I think if you just had to look at the race, you would understand why, why it seems a disappointing run. But uh, in my mind, it's not a disappointing run. It's a, a race that you have to just put a line through um, these horses and um, come back to fight another day. He, he will be running in the, in the, in the Champions Cup on, on Gold Cup Day. Yes. Jeff, Seek Potion finished nine lengths back in the Vodacom Durban July. How has she come through that? And when can we possibly expect to see her out and about again? Michelle, she came through it fine. Um, what was yet another awfully muddling July, you know? Yeah. She needed a hot pace. Uh, she was well placed, and, and then when they pulled back and all the jostling happened, she got shuffled back too far. You know, she ran on nicely towards the end, but, um, you know, it's really not the way we want to see these, you know, great races being run. And I think until the Jockey Club get involved there um, and make sure that the pace is on from the beginning, you're possibly going to get the wrong results. Yes. But uh, I brought her back to Joe Bird, horse sickness vaccine time, and she'll most probably reappear in the spring and, um, you know, just go try and get some more of that lovely black type on her. Matthew, how has Yakin come through his Vodacom Durban July run and where to from here with the horse? Uh, Michelle, you, you pulled up very well. Um, we 
we've made plans to gal the horse, um, and bigger plans are to send him to Dubai. So he'll be leaving within the next month uh, for his overseas journey. Okay, so when will he be due to arrive in Dubai? It's normally a five-month journey, so probably around November, December time. Then Star Express, did the distance catch her out on the day? Yes, it did. Uh, unfortunately, she didn't see it out, but uh, she, she battles a little bit here in Natal. Her feet always give her a bit of hassle, and uh, also, you know, towards the end of the season, there was a lot of compounding on her heels, so uh, she didn't pull up as well as I hoped she would, but she's got a beautiful home. She's going to Fastfontein to breed. She'll be having lovely uh, green paddocks set, uh, with Carl the Foss and them on the farm. She couldn't ha uh, end up in a better place. I'm, I'm over the moon for her. Bar that, you know, they all, they all seem sound and can go home in one piece. And to be honest, if you could say to me, I'll come to the Durban season for four months and take every horse home sound, well, that's what we've accomplished. So for me, um, that is our, 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 our biggest uh, win uh, of, the, of the Durban season. Peter, how has White River come through his Vodacom Durban July run and where to from here with him? Right, he's, it was obviously a little bit of a disastrous day for him. Um, he boiled over completely in the, in the preliminaries and then what made it worse was a delay at the start, 13 minutes walking around behind the barriers and he was a muck sweat going in so his race was effectively over before it began. Yeah. Um, from here we're not going to run him again during the, the the KZN season, he's going to go back to Cape Town in the next month or so um, and prepare for races like the, the Queen's Plate and the Met. Glenn, tell me how Gold Standard has come through his Vodacom Durban July run and where to from here for him? Yeah, well, uh, look, thank God he pulled up 100% fine. Um, uh, look, he, he, it was quite a rough race for him. You know, he he, he, he was kicking the pins, they loaded him early, we've got to have him downgraded. And um, he missed the break, and you know, the, you know how slow the pace was, but um, uh, Corne couldn't hold it, uh, one side of his horse, and he ran into the side of us and, and uh, made our horse travel, and he was quite unsettled for the first part of the race. So we sort of like putting a line through the July run, but the good news is he did come out great, which is uh, uh, tops. Um, he's now heading for the, the Champions Cup and then t uh, you know, to stud duties at Druckenstein. Um, but I think weight for age, you can see a different game. You know, uh, yeah, He was so out of the weights in the July handicap and um, it was part of his preparation. It's, it's always been the, the, the Champions Cup. Uh, we need a Group 1 for him. It would be fantastic to send him home with a Group 1. Um, but uh, look, he, he's got the ability. The main thing is he's striding out magnificently well and he's taking his run really well. And we're quite excited. Uh, we've, we've kept the same jockey on and um, he's got an OK draw, so uh, we, we're quite happy with that and we'll see how the field cuts up but um, so far so good um, he's uh, really stripped down nice and fit and, and looking fantastic for next Saturday. Abashiri unfortunately has gone wrong in the running and that's the Vodacom Durban July. How's he doing after what happened in the Vodacom Durban July? Oh, well after his race Michelle we took him up to the um, Baker McRae clinic he pulled up unsound and we discovered that he'd torn all the branches of his suspensory. He was probably a, <coughs> a three and a half to four out of five lame. So how does this injury happen? We spoke to veterinarian Dr. Johnny Cave. So a racehorse um, weighing maybe four or 500 kilograms, traveling at above 60 kilometers per hour, at times we'll be putting all that weight and, weight and force through, through one limb yeah. as it's fully loaded. Yeah. All that weight going through the, the suspensory ligament and the tendons at the back of the fetlock, when they're fully loaded they stretch, they then contract like an elastic band and that cycle will be repeated many, many times during a horse's career. Um, so at times uh, those ligaments and, and tendons are prone to injuries and sometimes that's quite mild and sometimes quite severe. What are some of those soft tissue injuries that you do come across? In the lower limbs, in the front legs particularly, it will be the suspensory ligament yeah. and the superficial tendon are particularly prone to injury in racehorses. And what chance of rehabilitation is there for horses which suffer from this injury? If those injuries are relatively minor, the chance of coming back is good. But more severe injuries are, have a, carry a poor prognosis for return to racing. They can often be rehabilitated to um, exercise and compete at, at lower speeds and different disciplines. But racing is 
particularly hard on, on those ligaments and if they don't heal 100% they, they're often prone to re-injury. So what awaits Abashiri? Probably be a long process, probably five to six months recuperation, rehabilitation process really. And then after that we'll just give him a good arm. My intention is not to race him again. We asked Michael what happened in leading up to the Vodacom Durban July. I'm actually a little annoyed at myself because I don't think I should have put Pia on him after his first ride on him. Because on the day that I put Pia on him in the parade ring in that pinnacle plate 1200, he didn't want to go down to the post of Pia and he, he stuck up and he was full of nonsense. And I thought, why is this what's doing this? He, he never behaves like this with anyone else. I should have actually gone to Pia and said to Pia, you know, Pia, this horse doesn't like you. I know my horse. Yes. Don't you want to really try and get another ride? But if you don't, I understand you can stay with him 100%. And then on July day when I put Pia up in the parade ring, I already knew before the race I'm in trouble because he, he didn't want to go out in the parade ring. He's raced at Gravel before on three occasions and never, ever done that before. Yeah. And when he jumped out, he jumped out okay and he had a position, but then corner off on that was White River come sharply across Warren Kennedy and he pulled the horses back to an absolute snail pace. And then Pia had to check him severely. He grabbed him and his head went up into the air. And I think that is where the damage is done. That's where he fell out. And he dropped out to the back of the field. And then when they turned for home, Pierre went after him. And I think when he put the pressure on him, that's when everything went. And then Pierre, being the horseman that he is, realized what had gone wrong, stopped him straight away and jumped off him. And that is... That was a saving grace, and probably in the long run, that is what saved Abishiri. It's going to come true. Mark Alazzi is the winning trainer. I'm sure he'll have a few things to say after this. Let the horse do the talking, and that's exactly what he did. And Carl's All of my kids and my wife, they, they, he's one of those horses where he's just crept into the family yeah. and they love him to bits. I think the country loves him to bits as well, not just your family. Yeah, he's, he's, become, he's, he's mm. become the people's horse. Yeah. That is exactly what you say, because that's another thing. I must have had about a hundred phone calls and messages from various people about Abishiri. If anyone ever wants to come and visit him, they can just give me a call and they're more than welcome to come and see him at the Skybox. We'll be lining up and I think you're going to have to bring him out maybe on some of the bigger race days to parade as well. I think that's how he's touched the hearts of so many people and what he means to a lot of us. It would be my pleasure. From the Vodacom Durban July to the Elan Gold Cup. Gold Circle is said to have only the best stayers line up in South Africa's most famous thoroughbred marathon event, the 1.25 million Rand Grade 3 Elan Gold Cup, to be run over 3,200 metres at Gravel on Saturday, July the 28th. Well, it's going to be a fantastic closing to champion season 2018. 12 races on the day. Uh, the majority of which are feature races, four Group 1s plus the Elan Gold Cup, so it all adds up to quality. And uh, just hot off the press, we've seen the final fields, uh, race goers, punters, racing fans, owners, trainers, the press, uh, the media can look forward to a bumper day's racing. Um, the Elan Gold Cup has uh, attracted a, a great field, the defending champion Amosa Mundo is there, and of course It's My Turn who won the Gold Vase. Uh, so they, they, they probably the headline acts in, in this year's Elan Gold Cup, but many pretenders to the crown. I'm particularly excited about the final field for the World Sports Betting Champions Cup. Uh, Surcharge, winner of the Daily News, is in there. Eyes Wide Open, winner in the, in the Invest at Cape Derby, is in there. Undercover Agent, who won the uh, Rising Sun Gold Challenge so well, is in there. Plus, of course, Captain America, Sales South. So we've got the very strong younger brigade taking on the older brigade at true weight for age terms so that adds up to a fantastic race the two juvenile races are going to be super competitive barry hen unfortunately is not back but socrat is along with another stable companion so i'm sure mike de Kock will hold a very strong hand there the phillies race looks ultra competitive uh, but celtic c will be looking to follow up on her vodacom durban july day victory and then the, the, those races are underpinned by so many high quality group twos, including the gold bracelet. Now, what is very exciting, just really hot off the <laughs> press, is that Clava Flay Stud have come on board. The winner of the two year old grade one Etiquini Stakes and the winner of the grade two gold bracelet will qualify for a free service to any of the Estallions as an added incentive to win the race. 
it's uh, a post-race career opportunity uh, for those uh, fillies and uh, mares to get off to a flying start with their stud careers. But apart from uh, the high quality racing, I mean, it's just going to be a bumper day. What can be expected from a social point of view on the day? We're going to have a fantastic food village with 25 different food vendors and food trucks to create a brand new food court experience, offering everything that you can think of. So there'll be plenty of, uh, for the family to do. With all of the regular venues being fully booked, we've introduced a new concept into the Silver Ring, the Prawn Experience. Uh, 400 Rand gets you into the race course together with your 30 Rand betting voucher, plus your very own facility upstairs in the Silver Ring, uh, with your own private bar and toad facilities, and the opportunity uh, to enjoy prawns presented by the South African Chefs Association. So that promises to be a wonderful addition to the day, and it's the only venue left in which racegoers can possibly want to book if, they, if they're looking for a venue. I'm happy to say that all of the other venues are sold out. The charities are back, nine charity marquees on the infield as part of Gold Circle CSI program, plus one of the charities in the Sea Cottage Room. Edwina, what is Event World's involvement in the Elan Gold Cup? Well, we're responsible for putting up all of the marquees for the charities. Um, each charity gets a 200-seater marquee. Uh, we give them the tables, the chairs, the toilets, the plasma screens. Then they do their own catering and their own uh, decor. When do you start setting up? Uh, we'll start putting up the marquees next Tuesday and then uh, the marquee holders will start coming in from Thursday, Friday to do all of their decor and all of their catering. How many hospitality clients do you cater for? There's about 2,000 people um, across all the different marquees and then in the grandstand in the Sea Cottage. Uh, the Champions Room is for the sponsors Elan and they're giving away another 1 million rand uh, plot at Blythedale, their, their uh, coastal resort that they're developing. Uh, the Mercury on board for the first time this year in that the Mercury Sprint and that looks a hell of a race. It's going to be very hotly contested this year. All of the feature races have got full fields. They're on board this year. Normally the Mercury Sprint used to be run a week or so before the Gold Cup. And they're running their own competitions and their own charity drives. I think it's a day when you can enjoy high quality racing without the push and shove of the Vodacom Durban July. We love the Vodacom Durban yes. July because that's what it's all about. Yes. Uh, but here's an opportunity as a racing fan to come and enjoy the best riders, the best jockeys, the best trainers and the best horses on a day that you, uh, you know, you've probably got more freedom to move around and really enjoy yourself. Patrick, what can we expect in terms of betting and betting pools on Elan Gold Cup Day? Um, Michelle, I'm hoping that with us going back to the Elan Gold Cup only being on the one day, the Saturday, I think hopefully that'll attract more people back to the race course again. Hoping to have Betting pools, uh, total betting about the same as last year. We have gone through a decline this year. Won't be too disappointed with a slight decline, but um, as we've had the trend, but let's see if we can buck the trend this year. Many Equus awards are going to be on the line, yeah. uh, particularly the three-year-old category. That's, that's very that's exciting right. because, of course, Yay, Do It Again eight, staked his claim in the Vodacom Durban July. The uh, his season is over. But when you think about uh, Eyes Wide Open and Surcharge and Undercover Agent, whoever could pull this off, if one of the three does, will have very strong claims to being the three-year-old of the year. It's all up for grabs. It's going to be a fantastic day's racing. And we're going to have a visit from an international commentator too. Well, that adds a lot of spice, of course. The voice of Dubai, Terry Spargo, for 17 years, the voice of Dubai. And it's the initiative for Pro Sport International, uh, Mike McCabe and Brett Arthur, to invite him over to, to call uh, the Elan Gold Cup and the World Sports Betting Champions Cup. And I think that just adds to the flavor of the day. It internationalizes the race day. I think it's just going to add another measure of excitement to, to what is happening on the day. And of course, preceding the day is a, a big golf day at Royal Durban as part of the whole festivities uh, with a cocktail evening on the Friday evening at the Royal Durban Golf Club, uh, which will focus on what's happening the following day. So it's a, it's a great way to end the season. High quality racing, great atmosphere, Lots to do, lots to eat, lots to drink, <laughs> lots for the family to do. The kiddie zone will be out there, plenty of entertainment for the children. So we've tried to cater for everybody in a quality uh, manner. And most importantly, to dish up a program of races that is commensurate with that quality.
That's it for this week's show. We'll see you all again in a fortnight on Sunday, the 5th of August. You got long pants on, it must be cold this morning. <laughs>